Hello and welcome to Ace the English Hub. We have been dealing with the topic of linguistics and phonetics. We saw that linguistics covers five major areas: phonology, morphology, semantics, syntax, and pragmatics. We can also say that these five are the levels of linguistic study. We have already finished phonology and morphology. We have also covered a few aspects of phonetics including the organs of speech. A detailed study of the speech sounds will soon follow. Today we will be dealing with syntax. Syntax tells you how sentences are structured. We create meaningful utterances in a language by putting words together in a systematic order. So how do we order these words? Any language has hundreds of thousands of words to choose from. And these words can be used to create innumerable sentences. But there are only a small number of ways in which these words can be combined. This is because sentences have a structure. How is the structure achieved? There are certain combinations that are acceptable and certain that are not acceptable. The Oxford English Dictionary defines syntax as the set of rules and principles in a language which show how words and phrases are arranged to create well-formed sentences. Syntax studies the ways in which word categories can be ordered and combined. So what are these word categories or word classes? They are similar to the more traditional term that we studied in school, parts of speech. But don't forget to check out our grammar videos that deal with each part of speech. So, there are two major families of word classes. Lexical classes or open class words and function words or closed class words. The lexical categories in English are noun, verb, adjective and adverb. They carry meaning and often these words have synonyms or antonyms. The structure class words include determiner, pronoun, auxiliary, conjunction, quantifier, interrogative, preposition. So coming back to syntax, sentences have a certain order. There is a fixed order of word categories. By word categories we mean categories like nouns, adjectives, verbs, etc. Take a look at this sentence and the words used here. Let's also see what word category these words belong to. The study of syntax looks at the ways in which the word categories can be ordered and combined. We look at the order or distribution of these categories. We can see that the combination of determiner, noun, verb is a sentence that a speaker of English could produce and we call this a grammatical sentence. However, if we put these categories in the order noun, determiner, verb, it is not a sentence that can be produced by the rules of English. So, this is called an ungrammatical sentence. An ungrammatical utterance is marked with an asterisk. Let's look at another sentence. The girl sang happily. The girl happily sang. Happily, the girl sang. All these coordinations are grammatical in English. Let's look at an important tool used by the structuralists for syntactic analysis. Immediate constituent analysis or IC analysis was a method for syntactic analysis introduced by Leonard Bloomfield and formulated by Wells and Harris. In this analysis, a sentence is broken down into its immediate constituents. This analysis aims at analyzing each utterance into the smallest meaningful units possible. An utterance is cut into two natural divisions and this process of binary segmentation continues. It continues until we reach the smallest meaningful units. The units at the last level are called ultimate constituents. Let's look at the construction of this sentence. The boy ran away. IC analysis can be done by bracketing or by tree diagram. When represented as a tree diagram, it is shown as 
With this analysis, we can say that the construction, the boy ran away, consists of the constituents, the boy and ran away. The boy contains the constituents, the and boy. And ran away has the constituents, ran and away. At each stage of division, the two constituents are called the immediate constituents of that particular construction. The boy and ran away are the immediate constituents of the boy ran away. The and boy are the immediate constituents of the boy. Ran and away are the immediate constituents of ran away. The boy ran and away. The final constituents are the ultimate constituents. IC analysis helps to discover how units are hierarchically layered in structures. IC analysis can account for certain types of ambiguities. For example, old men and women is an ambiguous phrase. Who is old? Both men and women or just men? Bracketing in IC analysis helps to solve the problem. So IC analysis will help you find the right meaning. However, IC analysis has a number of limitations. It is not possible to analyze some structures that do not form proper grammatical groups. For example, she is taller than her sister. In this sentence, the sequence er than, that is a comparative degree, is not covered by IC analysis. There are three ambiguities that cannot be determined using IC analysis. First is lexical ambiguity. For example, the word banks. This word can either mean the side of a river or a canal and the land near it. Or it can be an organization that provides financial services. IC analysis fails to show this difference. The second ambiguity that IC analysis cannot determine is constructional ambiguity. The phrase hunting dogs can either mean dogs used for hunting or the act of hunting dogs. Third one is derivational ambiguities. Consider the phrase, the love of God. Who loves here? Does the phrase talk about God's love for us or our love for God? IC analysis cannot determine this. The next limitation of IC analysis is the problem of discontinuity. For example, is coming. Here, is is nearer to coming than to John. The ICs of this sentence is not is and John coming, but rather is coming and John. There is no way of representing this diagrammatically. The next problem is the problem of embedding. IC analysis cannot account for sentences involving embedding. For example, the boy who won the prize is my cousin. This sentence has two sentences embedded in it. IC analysis cannot show the structure of this sentence. Next is the problem of conjoining. An example of a sentence that uses conjoining would be I will go and meet him. IC analysis cannot handle conjoining structures. Next is the problem of overlapping ICs. Many a time overlapping ICs also cause a problem. For example, he has no interest in or taste for music. The sentence means to convey that he has no interest in music and he has no taste for music. The word no applies to both interest and taste. It is not possible to show this in the IC analysis. Next is the problem of structural similarity and different grammatical relations. There are some sentences that are structurally similar but semantically different. For example, John is easy to please, John is eager to please. These two sentences are alike in their surface structure but their meanings are different. IC analysis cannot show differences in grammatical relations. In the first sentence, someone pleases John and John is being pleased. Whereas in the second sentence, John is pleasing someone. IC analysis cannot show this difference. Now the next limitation is that IC analysis fails to reveal the relationships between sentence types such as active and passive, affirmative and negative, statement and question. For example, the sentence is, couple hit a six. A six was hit by couple are related. 
but through IC analysis, there is no way in which we can show that they are related. Here one is active and the other is passive, the relation which is not visible in IC analysis. So that's about IC analysis. Next week we'll look at phrase structure grammar. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you find our content useful. Thank you.